So you love the HTC One or perhaps you love HTC, but you just don't like that battery life or maybe you want something a little bit different from the pack, the device for you is gonna be the HTC Butterfly S. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com. This is the newest edition of the Butterfly family and it brings to the table some great improvements over the HTC One, including a bigger battery and a bigger 1080p HD display. Is it worth it at about 800 bucks unlocked? We'll find out in PhoneDog's full video review of the HTC Butterfly S. If you're looking at this smartphone and you're thinking to yourself that it looks very similar to other devices we've seen in the past couple of months, well, you're right. It looks a lot like the HTC Droid DNA, but it's not. It's the HTC Butterfly S. It's a new smartphone from HTC. It brings together the fusion of the HTC One, but brings in some features that make it a little bit better than HTC's flagship device that's global and is their flagship right now. The Butterfly S, just to give you a quick recap of specs, it's got a 1.9 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 600 CPU, a 5-inch 1080p HD display with 441 pixels per inch, a 4-ultra-pixel camera back here, so the same camera with 1080p HD recording, a 3,200 milliamp hour battery, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, and then, of course, HSPA Plus connectivity if you're on AT&T in the U.S. Now, this thing works on AT&T, works on T-Mobile, and has Android 4.0. 2.2 Jelly Bean with HTC Sense 5, version 5 I should say, out of the box. So what it does, it brings the HTC One up from the past with the HTC Droid DNA design heritage, but with the HTC One specs, it makes it better in a lot of different ways. It's got a bigger battery, 3,200 milliamp hours versus 2,300 here. You've got two gigabytes of RAM, which the One has as well, but what it does have, while well, it's only 16 gigabytes of internal storage space, it has a micro SD card slot, and the big one for me is that it's got a nice big five inch 1080p HD display, so bigger display, so if you're that person that loved the screen size of the Galaxy S4, but didn't want perhaps the plastic, or you don't care for touch whiz, but you like that screen size, this is going be a nice unit for you. Now, unfortunately, it's not available on any carriers in the U.S. just yet, but you can buy it through specialty retailers such as Negri Electronics online at negrielectronics.com. <clears throat> you have to forgive me for my voice. I'm recovering from a cold, so I apologize for that. And I'm going to take that time to stop and thank our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices very similar to this. Actually, they give us HTC Ones, they give us Lumia 1020s and more for use in our One Paw Band-Aid giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get an HTC device or a Samsung device, you'll walk out working. They'll get your email, your contacts, your web, all that stuff set up so when you walk out the door, you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile. So the Butterfly S, like I said, an international device, very different, but again, brings some great things to the table like Android 4.2.2 out of the box, a bigger display, and then brings that Sense5 interface over to a different platform. So it has boom sound as well, I should point out, and it has Beats audio capabilities as well, but design-wise looks very much like the Droid DNA we saw last year on Verizon Wireless with the red accents, the black, and then the back while it is a chrome and not a matte version like the Droid DNA, still very similar all around. Now let's compare this to the HTC One and hold them side by side so you can kind of see what they look like. First of all, HTC Butterfly S has a glossy look and feel all around, and it serves a dual purpose. One, it's a little bit different from the HTC One, so you may love the design difference here of the Butterfly S as opposed to the mat on the HTC One. That said, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. You can really see it once I get close to the camera here. And I'll bring it in so you can take a look. You can see some of the fingerprints. And like I said, over here as well, and we saw this in the HTC Droid DNA as well when I do a fingerprint gesture, for example, you can really see that it's gonna pick them up. You can see that tread right there really quickly, and that's gonna be frustrating for a lot of people. Not to say the Droid DNA, or excuse me, the uh, HTC One doesn't do that, but still, with the matte back, it's not as noticeable. I'm constantly wiping this thing on my shirt, and that's something you may love, you may hate, and you may have to get over if you like the design of the Butterfly S, but you want that power of the HTC One. So let's talk about what comes in the box here, or comes on the device itself. You get a bunch of applications. This is a Taiwanese device. It uh, launches in Taiwanese markets in Asia as well. Japan, all that good stuff. And you've got some applications here that honestly, I have no clue what they are. I have not worked with them. I have Dr. I on this device as well. And I should point out, because this is an unlocked device, you're not gonna get any carrier installed bloatware, at least from US carriers. You can see My TV HD going down through here. You can see TuneIn Radio, and of course, all the HTC stuff, TV as well. I should point out that the power button, much like on the HTC One, has an IR blaster behind it as well, so you can use HTC's TV application and control your TVs, be it at the gym, be it at work, or be it at home. So otherwise, functionality very similar here, but a slightly faster processor, 1.9 or clocked at 1.9 gigahertz versus 1.7, which we'll do a quadrant standard test and take a look at here in just a second. But you got blink feed as well, and you can see I've pre-configured blink feed. And again, take a look at this versus the 4.7 inch display on the HTC One. And this is not a dogfight, but I wanna compare it to the device that's available in the US markets, just so you can see the difference 
difference between the two. And you can see right here, boom, that is what it looks like. Actually, I should line these displays up so you can see the size difference between five inches and 4.7 inches. We'll take a look at messaging here as well so you can see how the keyboard looks. And forgive me while I pull it away here and delete my personal text message thread. I'll go ahead and delete that out. And we'll go right in here and start a fresh one. So you can see portrait to landscape transition nice and fast here. HTC Sense 5 keyboard over here. Actually, one of my favorites that I've worked with in recent months. Samsung's TouchWiz keyboard, not the best in the world, particularly in the US where it doesn't have the autocorrect functionality. We'll say the quick brown fox <clears throat> is happy though he has a cold. Quick brown fox has a cold too. And we'll go into <laughs> quick brown fox is very much like me. And you can see here, attach picture, video, audio, location. You can do all the typical stuff here. And again, portrait to landscape, nice and fast. And you can see that that pesky menu button is up there on the top as well. Now, recent applications, I can double tap that or single tap, I should say, to access double, uh, recent applications that you have three buttons down here as opposed to two on the HTC One. You got back, home, and recent apps. Press and hold home to access Google Now as well. Now I have an AT&T SIM card in this. Like I said, it runs on AT&T and on T-Mobile in the States. And I'm going back and forth, I should say, between a mix of HSPA Plus, HSPA, as you can see up here, by the signal strength indicator. Now, one of the things Android 4.2.2 brings to the table is physical percentage indicator, but otherwise, outside of that settings, very run of the mill here in comparison to what we've seen from Sense 5 on the HTC One. You've got the same personalization options here, wallpaper, lock screen style, ringtone, notification sounds and more. Wallpapers are all the same. Through here, you'll notice all this stuff from Sense 5 and the HTC One. So outside of the body being different, the specs being different, that's really where you see the changes between it and HTC's flagship one. Stay tuned for part two. We'll talk about speed tests, the camera, and we'll put this thing through its paces in part two of the HTC Butterfly S video review.